In this video, I'm gonna show you how I created a marketplace with Stripe and how I take payments on behalf of other users, distribute the payments to their accounts and take a service fee off the top of those payments. So how does this work? So a user comes onto my website and they list a product for sale. So this user here comes onto my website and they list a product. And then another user comes along and they come onto my website and they purchase a product. So this user here thinks that they're buying from my website, but what they're really doing is buying a listing that this user over here created or buying a product from a listing that this user created. So I need a way to distribute the payments to this user that created the listing and I want to take my service fee off the top of that as well. So to do that, we need to first connect the account. And by connect the account, I mean connect the seller's account to my Stripe account. That's why this product is called Stripe Connect. Then we need to create a payment on behalf of the connected account. And then we need to complete the checkout process. So before we go any further, I just wanna mention that there's some legal things that you need to consider when you're connecting accounts and you're taking payment on behalf of other users. I'm not gonna go into the legal side of that. The Stripe documentation is going to explain how you need to set it up to meet your purposes and what sort of liability you wanna take. I'm just gonna show you how to do this technically. So the first thing that we want to do is to connect the account. Now there's two different ways that you can do this. You can do this through a onboarding flow on your website. And then I think you do it through the API. I've never actually done that. The only way I've ever done this is through OAuth. So I think this is by far the easiest way to do it. So to get into your OAuth settings, it's a little bit hidden and hard to find. So go into your settings and then go over to connect and then go over to onboarding options. Now I've set my account up for Stripe Connect. You will need to do that as well, but that's pretty easy. And I'm not gonna show you how to do that. So this is assuming that you already have your account set up for Stripe Connect. Then you come over to OAuth and this is going to give you your client ID and you can set your redirect URLs here. You can see that I have two set here. And the other thing that you'll need to have is if you go over to developers, you'll need to have your API key. So you can see here you have your publishable key and your secret key. And you will need to also have a webhook set up as well. So if I have a look at this webhook, you can see I have checkout session complete and checkout session expired. So whenever these two events happen, it's going to send a webhook to my server. So this is not gonna work at the moment because I don't have NG Rock set up on this computer, but that's fine. We can go through the rest of it. So the first thing you want to do is to set up your OAuth redirect URL. So when a user comes onto my website, they're going to have this button here that says connect to Stripe. Now you can see the link down here if I open this up, you can see that this goes to connect Stripe and it has all this funny stuff in the URL. The way that I got that is I have this server action here and I have all of these query params here and then I'm just adding them onto this URL. So these query params are saying that I want a response type of code and then I can use that code to fetch the user. Then I have set my client ID, you have to have that. I've set the scope, so I want to read write. I've set the redirect URL. So this is going to send a get request to my server with the code once the user has authorized their account. Then there's some other properties you can set as well. So I'm setting email because I know the user's email. And so this is going to fill in that form for them. I also know their country. And so I'm going to set the country for them as well. Um, I'm also setting some state here. You don't have to do this, but this is just for a little bit of extra security. And in fact, this is probably not that secure. So I'm just creating a base64 string of the user's ID. Okay, so when the user clicks that button, they're going to go to this URL. So let's go and click that button. Now I already have accounts set up that I can connect. 
And so I'm going to connect to this testing one that I've created here. If you don't have accounts connected that you can test with, then you'll have to set that up. And it's actually a bit of a lengthy process, which is annoying, but it simulates what a real user will have to do. So let's connect that. Now I'm being redirected back to my redirect URL. And let's go have a look at that redirect URL. So you can see here, I have it at API, OAuth and Stripe. So if we go into there, we can have a look at what's happening. So this is the code that we got. And we got that because we set the type as code. We also get the state parameter back. And remember, this is just a base 64 string of the user's ID. Then we're going to check that we have the code and the state. Then we're going to get the user's ID back out of this string. Then we're going to set a undefined value of the Stripe's user ID. Then we're going to use the code here to get the user from Stripe. So this is like a single use code. This is just a normal OAuth flow if you're familiar with that. Then when we get that response, we're going to get the Stripe user ID on the response. So we can set that. And then I'm just going to update the user with their Stripe user ID. Then I'm going to do a few other things as well down here. I'm just going to set some metadata on the Stripe account and I'm just going to set the user ID and this is my local user ID. So it's just going to be a UUID and I'm going to set the email that I have for them. So this is probably a little bit redundant because it's most likely going to be the same email, but this is just showing you that you can update the account. Okay, cool. So now that I have connected my Stripe account, I can create a listing so I'm just going to go through that process here. So this is just telling me to pick a private repository because this website that I'm working on here, repos.io, is going to allow you to sell private repositories. But this can just be anything that you're selling on behalf of that user. So I'm going to say this is a test listing. Submit that. Okay, so I'm just going to fill in the rest of this form here. Now I'm going to set a price. So I'm going to set this price to, let's say $400. It's going to upload a couple of images. Now I can update my listing, set it to publish. And now I can go over to my listing. Now this is the interesting part here. We have this buy button here and let's go have a look at what happens when the user is going to click this. Okay. So this is my buy now button. So I have this server action, handle buy now button, click action. And then when they click that, it's going to return a URL and it's just going to redirect them to that URL. So let's have a look at what this button does. So this action just calls another function and this is called create payment intent. And I'm going to take the listing ID. So I'm just going to get the listing and I'm going to get the user. If the user is not available, then I'm just going to create a payment intent for an anonymous user. But if the user is available, so they're logged in. So if the user is logged in, I'm just gonna try find an existing purchase object. So if a user clicks this button, let's say they click it and then they create this payment intent, but then they don't actually go through with it. I don't wanna create a new payment intent because the old one probably hasn't expired. So I wanna find the existing one and then I can use that to redirect them to. I hope that makes sense as a little bit confusing, but if we just scroll down past this bit, you can see what we're doing if they haven't clicked the button before. Okay, so I'm finding the owner of the listing by the listing ID. Then I'm just doing a little bit of validation here. Then I'm getting the listing price in cents. So I'm creating this constant here called application fee amount. And I'm just gonna say that this is 10%. So it's a listing price in cents times 0.1. So this is 10% of the listing price. So is it, this is the fee that as a platform owner, I'm going to take, and I'm going to take that from the seller. So the person buying the product pays the same amount, but the seller, they forfeit 10% of the selling price. And that goes to me. So you can configure this on an account by account basis, or you could just hard code it here like I have. Then we're just getting the unit amount from the listing and remember that the unit amount is always in cents. So then we're just going to set some pricing information here. So this is an array of line items. I'm only going to have one line item, um, but you could probably have lots of different line items in here if you wanted to. 
Then we're going to set the currency. We're going to set some product data. So this is just the listing title. And we're going to set the unit amount. And I'm just going to hard code the quantity to one. Then we're just going to set some metadata on this payment intent. So the listing, user ID, and the email. Then we're going to set the payment intent data. So this is the application fee. So this is my fee. Then we're going to transfer data and the destination is going to be the owner's Stripe user ID. So remember when I connected my account, I set my Stripe user ID on my account. And this means that it's going to transfer the payment to that account. Mode is payment. And we're going to have a success URL. So they get redirected to payment success. Or if they cancel, they just get redirected back to the listing. And then after I've created that payment intent, I'm going to save it in my database. So then if the user comes back, they click on it again and they haven't actually gone through with the payment, then I can just get this existing payment intent. Okay, so let's see this in action. We can click buy and it's going to go create that payment intent for us. If we go have a look in the database. You can see here we have this purchase. So we have the amount in cents is 4,000. Sorry, 40,000. The application fee is going to be 4,000. So this means the application fee is going to be $40, which is 10% of the 400. Then we have the session URL. So that will be the same as this URL that they got redirected to. So we can fill this in with some dummy information because you can see that we're in test mode here. So if we go over to Stripe test card details, On the Stripe website, you'll see all of these test card details here. So we can just copy a number there. Then you can put the year in in anything that's in the future. Any CSV, any name, and let's pay. And this is not going to work properly because my webhook is not connected to an actual URL. So it won't update in my database, but that's okay. We can still see what's going to happen in Stripe. Okay, so let's go over to payments. And you can see that we have this payment here for $400 that we just did then. And my connected account is in Australian dollars. So it has transferred it over to that account in Australian dollars. And then I paid a Stripe fee of $21 as well. So let's go have a look at the connected account. And now this connected account should have been funded. Yep, $591, which is the $400 converted into Australian dollars minus the fee. So you can see here, the fee was $59.11 in Australian dollars. So that is how I created a marketplace with Stripe Connect. If you have any other questions or video requests, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.